Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Daniel representing PMS Bazaar. I welcome you all to the new season of MK Alpha Ma events. And in the first episode of this season, our guest speaker will share their insights on how new age fintechs are looking to disrupt the wealth management space. On behalf of the participants, I welcome our guest, Mr. Abhijit Bave from Fisdom, Vikas Sachdev, and Sachin Shah from MK Investment Managers. Before I hand over to them, let me give a quick introduction about the speakers. Abhijit Bave is the CEO of Fisdom Private Wealth, the uh, wealth management of, of uh, Fisdom, with an overall experience of 25 years across BFSA spectrum in India, UAE, and Vietnam. He is an alumnus of IAM Lucknow and BJITI Mumbai. Prior to joining Fisdom, he has worked for global organizations like Deutsche Bank and HSBC, as well as Indian organizations such as ICICI Bank, Unitrust of India, and Kavi Private Wealth. Warm welcome to you, sir. Vikas M. Sachdeva, the Chief Executive Officer, MK Investment Managers Limited. Vikas is an industry stalwart with over two decades of experience across MarkU financial service organizations. Vikas was the CEO of Edelweiss Asset Management Limited, the global CEO of Enam Asset Management Limited, one of the founding members of Birla Sun Life AMC, among others. His industry affiliations include a seat at the Mutual Fund Advisory Committee, and he was also on the board of Amphi, heading the ETF and indexing committee. Thanks for joining, Vikas. Sachin Shah, a fund manager, MK Investment Managers Limited. Sachin is a seasoned fund manager with over two decades of experience in the Indian equity markets. Sachin realized the importance of governance early on and was instrumental in the development of equal risk and EIML proprietary module, which helps the company to evaluate and compare the listed companies on the various aspects of governance. And also, I would like to thank Finland Academy for their prize to the best questions, which will be announced end of the session. A bit about Finland Academy. Finland Academy is a training and investment education initiative. It is a research-driven, technology-oriented training and transaction organization focused on providing a dedicated education in training and investment-related subjects. So without further delay, I am handing over the session to Vikas and Sachin. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for the uh, nice introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. It is indeed a pleasure to start off season two of uh, MK Alpha Mavens with a new partner, PMS Bazaar. Very happy to partner with them. And I think uh, we are already seeing this in terms of uh, the registrations for the show. I believe there have been over 500 registrations uh, to the show and a barrage of questions. So thank you, team PMS Bazaar, for enabling this. Uh, we may have a new partner. However, two things remain the same as always. These being our commitment to bringing you insightful senior management perspectives into various aspects of the wealth management industry and my colleague Sachin Shah and myself having the privilege to host this show for you. Uh, you know, talking about the show, talking about the guest, Mr. Abhijit Bhave, let me as always bring forth the personal person behind the profession for you. It's indeed a pleasure. Sir, Abhijit, I have been talking to uh, your friends, your colleagues, and uh, you know, uh, I'm delighted to share some of the insights they've given me about you. Uh, well, I think one of the key things which people describe about you is you are a fighter to the core. Okay, uh, You take up everything as a challenge. In fact, uh, one of the things I've heard uh, is that uh, you've had a degenerative bone disease identified around 15 years back, wherein the doctors actually said you would have a little bit difficulty. Uh, in fact, you will find it difficult to have much physical activity. You took it up as a challenge and you become a fitness enthusiast. Today, you know, in 2022, circa 2022, you're actually walking 10,000 steps a day. And on 26th of Jan, I believe you walked 26,000 steps to commemorate Republic Day. That's fabulous. At a personal level, I think uh, I've been following your story and I think a lot of people have been following your story on LinkedIn in terms of uh, your fight back from COVID. I think some of the visuals which you put out there and the, the intensity of the, the struggle which you had has been quite inspiring. Uh, Abhijit, is an avid omnivorous reader. Uh, on one hand, when I say omnivorous, because on one hand, he enjoys books on self-development and management. And he's currently actually reading a book called Blitz Scaling, in case anybody wants to uh, read it. And on the other hand, he enjoys fiction, his favorites being Jeffrey Archer. And in fact, I believe we have finished every single book of Jeffrey Archer. Uh, you're a follower of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. You have a lovely family. Your wife is into designing. Son is in class eight, and you also have a very sprightly cocker spaniel for a pet. 
I don't know how many people know that you've actually played cricket with Sachin Tendulkar. Uh, that's something, you know. <laughs> uh, you love traveling across the world, and I think one of the things the audience will realize, uh, as I have done whenever I've interacted with Abhijit, one of the great things about him is his unique ability to blend humor into every conversation. uh people talk about you as being a complete people's person you remember every little thing about uh, all your colleagues uh, one quirky thing about your vijit which i found very endearing is that you love acronyms like 4t 4c smart which actually explains things much much better i think this is very interesting uh, you're a stickler for business etiquette you can actually get uh, your colleagues have been telling me that you can actually get a little irked by people not being punctual not being formally dressed for a business meeting because you believe you're in the business of managing money and whatever the client chooses to dress we have to be dressed formally uh, now you know why we are wearing suits on a friday afternoon <laughs> right <laughs> so, to start off uh, let's get on to the question answer session i'm going to hand over the baton to my colleague sachin shah to ask the first set of questions a very warm welcome to you Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, you you put me onto the proverbial chane ke ped pe. But but you know, before Sachin starts, and I think you have not really studied too deep. In my uh, school days, I used to do a lot of clubbing, but the clubbing was chess clubs. I used to be avid chess player. In my school days, my uh, claim to fame was my neighbor who was Akshay Kumar, and uh, reading. I, I love. Yeah, you you missed that part. I love reading, and I believe that a good reader is a good leader and there is this movie coming called rrr and i would say rrr stands for relearn relearn and relearn and in fact i took this book out you know this is should be the slogan of life what got me anywhere won't get me anywhere else you have to keep on relearning this is a this is a marshall goldsmith book i don't think you can see it but yeah yeah so yeah thank you so much thank you so much and thanks pms bazaar thank you thank you abhijit uh, welcome to the show once again and uh, so i have i have known you for now more than i guess 6 years plus or maybe 7 years and uh, i completely uh, agree with what vikas said the kind of the humor that you always get in fact the way you started this thing also uh, speaks of that and uh, i love that part of yours let me tell you that so really 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 i, I am so glad that i know you you know because i learn a lot from you every time i meet you uh thank you so much for being with us today uh just to just you know you know to kick start the our discussion today uh i was just thinking if you can give a a brief overview of uh you know fisdom private wealth uh because you are you are the you are the new boy on the block right and uh, if i can use the word you are the disruptor right there are goliaths and uh, you are you are going to disrupt them i'm pretty sure about that how do you plan to do that so uh, fisdom private wealth is a startup in a startup you know fisdom is is now quite a old company we have been there for the last 6 years has been doing really well in terms of using technology and getting people across the length and the breadth of the country to invest fisdom private wealth started uh, less than 6 months back and you know uh, we are we, we believe and we claim that we are, we are not a wealth management company we are a technology company in wealth management and you know just to draw a parallel i remember the first time and you would remember the first time you rode an uber or ola now uber and ola are tech companies but we users got better cars cleaner cars air conditioned cars timely timely cars and cheaper cars similarly when swiggy and ola swiggy and uh, zomato came we got food delivered from anywhere in the city at a lower cost with discounts and it was it was client delight what they also did was they expanded the market people not using taxis are using taxis people not doing online ordering are doing online ordering so we are the uber or the swiggy of wealth management and that is what we want to achieve we want to add value to the client we want to uh, get clients what they possibly have not they can not thought that they can get and get that at a cheaper cost you know in economics there's a term such in which is called ceteris paribus ceteris paribus means everything else remaining the same, same yeah. so if so for example if i have decided i'm going to buy a particular maruti swift mm-hmm. desire and i'm getting that car cheaper in some other place i'll buy it from there so we are saying ceteris paribus at lower cost but why ceteris paribus why not better so our objective is to try and offer 
what clients are not getting in wealth management, especially HNI wealth management, and also give at a cheaper cost. Uh, that that that's an interesting point that you made, and that actually brings me on the other side of the table. So, like, suppose if I'm an HNI, as you said, that's your target audience, right? So, as an HNI, I, obviously, I'm already having uh, options or already working with some of the traditional private wealth management platforms or firms, right? So, as a fintech, right? Uh, but I still have a lot of problems, right, uh, with my traditional uh, wealth management firms or the RM is changing, so many things, right? Uh, uh, but how how do you, as a fintech, how do you plan to address some of these challenges that I have today? So since we started by discussing book, there's a very nice Simon Sinek book called Start with the Why. So okay. you, you start a business, you start a, a start, you do a startup or you, you start a fintech kind of business trying to solve problems. So we have to first identify what are the problems that the clients are facing or the clients don't even know that they are facing. So we have identified four such problems. In fact, I have uh, shared a slide on that. We are calling it the four C's. So we're trying to okay. resolve four C's for clients. Now let's start go. And this will be a slightly longish answer. Sachin, please allow me, allow me there. No, no, please, please. We are very happy to hear that. Yeah. So correctness of advice, you know, I, uh, had my first client buying a mutual fund in 1996. And this is since then I have seen clients uh, and I've seen wealth managers and every wealth manager wants to ensure correctness of advice. Now, how that does ha that happen? That happens through knowledge, through experience that happens through research. Now we all have that, but at that moment of truth, when I'm sitting in front of a client with two PMS products, which are possibly similar, at the back of my mind, I might start thinking, where am I getting higher commissions? Now that fundamentally uh, takes that correctness of advice away. So what we have done is we have the research and we have wonderful research at FISDOM and FISDOM Private Wealth. We have people, so we have, we, we are a new company. We are around 57 people. Between us, we have 750 years of wealth management experience. Wow. But what we have done is we have set no revenue targets. So you, once you take out revenue targets from the wealth manager, his priority will always remain the customer. So that's correctness of advice. And that I have never seen uh, in any wealth management organization. Brilliant. So let's come to cost. Now, a lot of people are doing, uh, have been doing regular plans in mutual funds and definitely in PMS and AIFs. There has been an Amphi campaign, which talks about direct plans. What we are saying is we are saying direct. We are also a proponent of passive investments. So we have actually done uh, studies on passive and where passive can be better than active. And this is a debate, but part of it passive, but let's talk of advisory. We are saying any client. So we start at a investment amount of 25 lakhs, but any client above one crore, we are saying advisory only advisory only, which means direct plans only. Now, direct plans, not just of mutual funds, but we are tying up with uh, all uh, manufacturing companies of PMS and AIFs and trying to do direct plans for PMS and AIF too. And that is where the cost will drastically go down. And it's not about the cost. If I'm giving 100 rupees and I'm saving one or two rupees, I'm actually investing one or two rupees more. So compounding gives me higher return. So that is something clients may not even know, but we're trying to solve that problem for them. So let's talk of... Uh, you know, convenience. Now, convenience is easy to understand when you talk of technology, but we are talking of a physical model, physical and technology put together. So the client needs RM, he has RM, the client needs technology, he has technology. Uh, but, you know, still there are a lot of things today, you know, many years back, I remember FISDOM was the first organization which on the app allowed signature with a finger for mutual fund KYC. But we are working uh, on, on a technological uh, platform where PMS, which is, which is what we all talk about today. PMS requires 30, 40, 50 physical signatures. Now that is not convenience by any standards. So we're working on something It's coming soon where it will be only one wet signature. AIF, we're working on some technological output where there will be zero wet signatures. So that to my mind is convenience, ease, speed. Uh, that's something that we uh, we are trying to solve. And lastly, you know, control over the portfolio. You know, we uh, uh, as a client, I would depend a lot on my advisor. 
but i also would want to do things uh, without uh, my advisor at different points of time so in in fintech there is phrase called democratization of information so that is something you know if you can't google it you'll have to still uh, have it some way so we are we are working on something so one is simple you know you uh, have control in fact we had this television ads that came up a few months back where our tagline was so wisdom stands for financial wisdom and our tagline was investments per power control so control is you know i'll i'll give you an example anybody i can bet this anybody including you and me today if you go and buy a car we will go to a car portal and we will compare cars for ourselves we will not look at the agent saying sir ye gaadi le lo wo gaadi le lo so that is what we are trying to do where it's again coming soon we want to give a drop down to our clients where across all mutual funds all pms products all aifs all unit link plans they can actually do a drop down compare for themselves and form their own opinion and that is true control whether you are buying or you are redeeming so these are the four uh, sees the four problems that we are trying to solve uh, in this uh, new model uh, uh, of fintech in hni wealth management brilliant brilliant abhijit and uh, i must say that in my more than two decades of experience see everybody says right that we will give you the right advice what is in your interest but you know making people walk the talk is is the you know as 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 vikas always says that's the moment of truth right and when you say you have no targets that that itself you know you you're re- really laying the foundation no revenue right? targets because that no revenue targets what yeah. actually takes the rightness away at some points of time right so you are really laying the foundation absolutely very right and very strong and then the second part again where you say that we want it to be a 100% advisory model where you want to really bring the pms and the airs also under the direct plans and i think that's that's brilliant because to my mind that's a win 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 today because because i'm on the fund management side and as a fund manager when i know that when my performance pre fees i mean to a significantly lower fees compared to what we are loading it today it's a huge difference and the investor would be so much better off because the advisory fees is actually a fraction of that yes and it's a it's a, it's a complete win win so i think uh, you've really well thought out this and i really wish you all the best and i, I truly mean that i truly think this is really disruptive and i think you will get a lot of success Thank fantastic because so over to you uh, uh, this was very engaging i was listening to it in fact one of the things you mentioned uh, uh, when you were talking in the slide was the digital model now that's pretty interesting uh, how how does a digital model i'm just asking to elaborate a bit more on this how does a digital model add value to the investors i mean uh, we keep hearing about pure tech or pure traditional sort of uh, you know methods of advice from a wealth management firm to a client what does this digital model if you can just uh, share a few insights on to that so the many years back vikas i used to be a branch manager in a branch of hsbc and that that's you know <laughs> i think 20 years back so that is where we used to we started talking about you know bricks and mortar banking and clicks banking and we were trying to move the clients to internet banking by forcibly taking them to kiosks and saying sir net banking kar lo now you also would have been i have been on multiple panels on robo advisory where we have said you know robo advisory will really work in india people in india want to meet their wealth manager now a lot of things have changed post covid you know all the digital transformation stuff that people used to write on white boards was forced onto us so i think things have changed but what we have is uh, as you mentioned a digital model so so we are uh, it's as about since you spoke about full forms and short forms we have made this 4t framework and there's a s- small slide we made because we want people to remember this otherwise you tend to forget you know again if you see from a client's perspective he wants a talent so you know i, I met a hni and, and i will i will not take anybody's name and i asked him before i joined fisdom sir you tell me what do you expect from a wealth manager and he says i need two things one is i want a wealth manager who does not have targets and i want a wealth manager who knows more than me so knowledge wisdom experience that's talent that's important that's always required especially when you are putting crores of rupees 
technology that is where uh, the fintech advantage is so talent plus technology coming together that's the digital model with transparency transparency in what you are doing that will get trust because financial uh, in financial markets investments is all based on trust now today if you look at any traditional player do do they will say that they are now going into technology uh, application they will take time at fisdom we have a 90 member tech team who are working on improving so 90 90 sorry you said 9 90 90 wow. 90 that's fisdom they are looking at improving the client experience every single day so that's real technology now if you just take a normal technology company i'll again not go into names who who actually they want people to just come online on the app transact and go away now that is something uh, hni may not want he wants to have the trust where he also wants to meet somebody so you know we had uh, uh, a client which we onboarded uh, around 2 months back in a tier 2 city in gujarat and there we were uh, uh, talk we were there with another pure tech firm but the client gave us his money only because he knew the rm for the last 8 years so that is the combination so new tech company plus talent old traditional company plus technology that is what will lead to trust that is that is what we believe would be the benefit of a uh, physical model in fact uh, i'm just realizing that there are so many questions which have come in from the audience uh, in terms of trust in terms of robo advisory how can you impart trust i think you've pretty much summed up the answer to most of these questions so i guess the audience uh, would realize that a lot of which they are talking about is being preempted and being taken care of by new age companies like yourselves talking about new age i think this is one of the questions i've been wanted to ask you you see on one hand we are seeing an increase in the wealth creation for millennials as we call them right uh, you said 20 years ago you were a branch manager so anybody born around that time would be a millennial right if i'm not not wrong right <laughs> 2025 years ago but even today and i say that with uh, complete humility majority of the wealth is held by 40 50 years old right uh, they are the uh, quintessential hni investors uh, which are around which are your target audience which are my target audience now considering that you're talking about a digital model considering that you're talking about a digital dispensation are these 40 50 years old and above clients are they tech savvy enough to uh, you know take care of this uh, transformation and avail of these uh, sort of uh, insights which you're trying to give them Okay, so I am assuming that you are. Uh, you, it's a loaded question where you believe they are not. So I will tell you, you know, and forget forty fifty. I, I'll 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 beg to differ at both points. So I'll tell you something. My father is eighty six. Touchwood is is uh, is healthy, and uh, he uh, sits on his computer every day and Google's. He goes to LinkedIn and looks at people's profiles that tell him about. And for all you know, he might actually be watching this program. so it's not about the age it's as i said it's about your learning you you learn you enjoy you use it i know so many people who are above 55 60 who book ubers and so that is one secondly the average age of the hni has rapidly gone down you know when i was i was uh, say work, working in in banking in wealth management most of our clients were 60 plus now today the hni you know we have this novio rich people these technocrats and we meet hnis who are by the way even 25 but 30 35 so for us the right client is 35 to 55 who is actually completely open to change who it's not that others are not as i told you old uh, people beyond that also like change because now it's also forced upon them because of uh, covid but these are the people who are creating more and more wealth and they don't have what is something very important which is time and that's where actually technology helps you can just use a app use a web app and do your transactions very fast you can do a quick whatsapp video call and do a transaction fast so i don't think it's really about the age for technology usage uh, and i also think that the hni is becoming younger in india especially because we have the world's largest young earning population Debate a lot of this question, but I I like your perspective. I think it's a great time to be alive. It's a great time to be in India right now, and uh, I think the uh, the wealth creation which is happening are going to turn out a lot more HMIs across the entire age spectrum. Uh, and you know, for fifty years old, sixty years old, if they are not tech savvy yet, I think your father's example 
uh, should inspire a lot of people to start looking at this. What is just said na, reminds me of our uh, Prime Minister's speech last year on the Independence Day, where he quoted a poet who said, "Yahi samay hai, sahi samay hai." This is the time, this is the right time. I think we are in the right uh, country, right, right industry. Hopefully, in the right organizations at the right time. So, you want to yeah. take it from here? Yeah, yeah. So, just couple of things before I come to the next question. So, like Abhijit, what you're saying. So, as I think even uh, one of our earlier ministers mentioned, this is an idea whose time has come. Yeah. And uh, you know, another very interesting point that you made, Abhijit, was uh, yeah, uh, is that you said your target audience is 35 to 55 uh, HNI. So, I was just thinking that I and Vikas have now very few years. To become eligible part of your <laughs> target audience. <laughs> if we don't, if we don't create about that yourself wealth, as a child, not about me. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't create that wealth in the next few years, then we are out of that. <laughs> so we are going to work hard. Anyways, uh, see another very interesting point that Abhijit you made was about uh, you know you you met a, an investor in a tier two town in Gujarat, right? And that that brings up a very interesting point in the sense that. If I see the mutual fund industry in the last 10 years, the kind of the SIP flows that we have seen, amazing steady flows, right? 10,000 crores, irrespective of the market, the kind of the maturity. I think a lot of creditors would go to because the way the mutual fund industry has gone in that B30 towns, the beyond 30, right? Uh, the beyond top 30, right? So, uh, you know, as a fintech, you also probably have that power uh, to offer these wealth management products to investors, to, to people who have wealth, to manage their wealth beyond the tier one city, right? Because yes. tier one, everybody has maybe two, three wealth managers. It's easily accessible, right? You call up a guy and they have an office, they'll come down to you. But beyond that, I think it's the fintech probably has some uh, uh, power to do this. Uh, do you have any thoughts on this? So before I go to that answer, you know, you said something about SIPs and power. So that reminds me of a Bollywood movie dialogue, which I often quote to clients, by the way. There was a Shah Rukh Khan movie called Chennai Express, where he said that do not underestimate the power power of the common man. Common man yes. And for me, the common man's power is SIP. When I used to be in UTI uh, 25 years back, he used to say that the FIIs run the market. Now today, the SIP book is bigger than many FIIs. So absolutely, you know, it's a changed world. You know, coming to your, your point on tier two cities, you know, you know, uh, in the beginning. Uh, Daniel said, Sachin, you yourself, uh, because you are industry solvers yourself and, you know, you have met so many clients in so many cities, you know, I love my job because I have been very lucky over so many years. I have been, uh, uh, I have been meeting very, very successful people across various cities and towns and that, uh, that makes me learn a lot. You know, I, I remember, you know, I'm just going to give you a few examples, a few anecdotes, actually, maybe I'll tell you the names of cities also. Uh, Kolhapur, from Kolhapur in Maharashtra, if you have, do a two hour drive, you go to a much smaller town, so that should be tier three. And many years back, I met somebody there who had 58 cars, 58 cars. Wow. So yeah. there is this wealth and he told me he just bought a second chopper. So I don't know how many <laughs> he has now. You know, four, four hour drive from Delhi, there's Muradabad. And you know, Muradabad has uh, some very successful people. They have the largest exporters to Walmart, Walmart uh, of uh, brass artifacts and they have so much knowledge about US markets and they have so much money. You, you go down south a few hours from Chennai, there's Velur and there's Christian Medical College and there are doctors who are very successful, uh, who have been around the world and who are wealthy. You know, uh, I there was there's another, another city actually in Maharashtra, which was there in the newspapers for some years back because it had the la largest sale of uh, luxury Mercedes, cars, Mercedes. Aurangabad. So I had once gone to Aurangabad, I was addressing some 50 HNIs and then I spoke to them after that one to one, at least 30, 35 from there were foreign educated. They came back to India. They set up their manufacturing units in MIDC there. So these are the people who have global connects, SME, you know, SME across tier two, tier three. They know a lot of things. They don't need education on investments because they just know. Doctors across across cities and towns, there are professionals. What they need is access. What they need is quick uh, transaction, not just stocks and uh, mutual funds, but PMS, AIFs, pre-IPO stocks, bonds, everything. 
i think that is where there is massive massive potential and if i if you solve the problem of access give it a reasonable cost then sky and mars is the limit and maybe beyond you know that's again you know now i'm going to be a devil's advocate out here uh you talked about access right and you talked about democratization right so clearly there's democratization of information data everything is available google it and you know who's performing who's not performing uh why are they not performing there are enough amount of comments enough amount of reviews previews whatever you call it right everything is there in black and white virtually black and white right so then the investor i mean today in fact i had i had a call with one of my investors and he tells me you already bought this stocks uh now you i know the names i'll invest directly why should i be with you yeah right so the question is that the information is there uh investors might think that uh, we can just do it by ourselves do it yourself diy uh, like it's an ikea store uh what, 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 your your thoughts on this that do they do, do do they need us yeah you know this is this reminded me of one of my uh, bosses in hsbc who once told me about too much data and what he called analysis paralysis so uh, diy you know i i uh, I, I will give you a, a, a simple example you know i'll give simple example suppose i have fever i have 100 fever i will just take a crocin and i'll sleep off and hope that fever will go but if i have 103 fever and i am getting vertigo and i am getting a stomach pain i will go to a doctor we are financial doctors if i am i am starting with a smaller amount and i am enjoying doing it i have the technology i have the information uh, across various channels i can just do it myself buying mutual funds or buying blue chip stocks and you know i think vikas said this to me yeah, we always say it's in hindi na ki ek bar agar muh jal gaya doodh se to hum chhas bhi phook phook pe peete hain i think the best way of learning is to fail so i'm not saying you fail i'm just saying that you do it yourself if you love doing it if you enjoy doing it if the amounts are not really large do it if the amounts are large you know i, I i'll tell you uh, i in this last week itself i met a paint manufacturing sme company from pune and another industrial coatings company in noida and these people they their passion is their work their engineers they manufacturing they are creating wealth their time is important the same time that they will do they will spend in selecting a stock or a pms or a mutual fund they can spend that time in their manufacturing plant they will enjoy it they will create more wealth that is where there is a need for somebody who is a subject matter expert whom you can trust who will be client centric and who will help you achieve your uh, financial goal so it's it's some even some hnis can do it yourself but i think it's important that you you uh, we, all of us have 24 hours so we have to do things which we enjoy doing which have we have to do things that add value and outsource some parts of our work absolutely i completely agree i can't agree more with you uh, you know aviji thank you thank you vikas in fact uh, you know whenever i get this question uh, uh-huh. i have been getting this question for quite a few years from the mutual fund industry when we used to publish our portfolios uh, we can buy the stocks what is stopping us why should we pay you this fee and all of that and i have been maintaining only one thing i said by all means go and buy it you know you should buy it if you know the portfolio you should buy it but there is a left brain thing and a right brain thing to money management left brain is the data right brain is the behavioral part of it and that is why actually you pay us for it right Uh, but it's a very interesting question, and I think the the argument will never die down. Uh, and so, because uh, another important point that you always make, sasti cheese or achhi cheese me farak. Far ko pay. I like that thing always. <laughs> I mean, not not only for investors, but even when I have to, you know, choose a few things when I am deciding, yeah, it it re- that really always rings a bell. Absolutely, absolutely. I think we we need to be more demanding, but we need to know the value and the the difference between value and cost. But but on that sasti and achhi cheese, I think that brings me to my next question, which is basically on the cost. You know. Yeah, but sorry, on that na in just before that, you know what you said is right. Sasti, achhi value and price because I am a marketing grad also. What price you pay and what value you get? Sometimes I actually disagree on this part. Sometimes you get good things sasti also. Sasti does not mean cheap in value. Some cheap things in price, you are getting a massive discount on something which you really want for a long time. It can be value for money. Just a point. Sasti may not always be bad. Ankan, you are preempting my next question, so maybe you can add a bit more here. 
you know, uh, we talk about lower costs, okay, being a mode. Uh, but l- I believe that costs need not be cheap. They should be yeah. competitive. They should not be cheap. In fact, I think the key thing is that the cost should, uh, at a particular cost, the investor should be seeing that you're adding value. And that is when, uh, you know, uh, he will be more uh, in tune in terms of subscribing to your services. What is your view on that? So, you know, uh, uh, let, let me talk of the, the fintech industry itself and, and well tech. And since in the beginning you showed, you spoke about this book called Grid Scaling. That book actually studies the, uh, the success stories of Amazon and Netflix and Uber. And it talks about nobody believed uh, that Uber will make money and nobody believed the market sizes. Uh, I think Professor Ashwat Damodaran had actually made a projection on the Uber market size which nobody believed, but the actual market size came up five times. So we are talking of expanding the market. You know, it's not just a mutual fund client. It is a stock broking client. It's a fixed deposit client. It's a cl- it's a person who has got money lying in cash, money lying in gold. There is no limit. So I will go back to the example of Uber and Ola and Swiggy and Zomato. You know, once I get used to a particular service, I like using that service. And it's, it's going from beyond customer satisfaction to customer delight to me becoming a fan of that service. And then I do not mind paying. Today, clearly, I'm paying <coughs> much more for my Uber ride than a normal Kali Pili. I'm paying delivery charges. I'm paying loyalty fees to Swiggy. So I think that is where it is. You know, uh, uh, here we give that value and over a period of time, clients will definitely want to pay because they don't want to lose out on the service. But here the order is create the value, show the value, experience the value and then start paying. And the profitability will come over a period of time because of volumes. Uh, I'm now going to probably ask you to uh, wear the hat of the tremendous amount of experience that you've had over the years. Okay. And do some crystal ball gazing into the future. Uh, you've been talking about this to me in bits and pieces, and I think it's going to be extremely useful for the audience to understand from you. How do you see, how do you see the future of the wealth management industry? And as a corollary, I think the next question of mine would be, do you think that the traditional model, which is there for wealth management, uh, that will become dormant stroke extinct over a period of time? So one is the future of the wealth management industry. And the other one is the uh, future of the traditional wealth management businesses. So if you, if you watch this sci-fi movies, they always say that the, the key to the future lies in the past. Have you heard this dialogue in movies? So you know, I just wanted to, I had uh, shared one slide on uh, fintech and I just wanted the audience to see this. You know, it's a, it's a very heavy slide, but I'm just going to try and see it myself. Yeah, it's a very heavy slide, but it tells you which are the part of financial services where fintech has started playing a large part. If you look at the Indian context, you know, uh, FinTech first came into payments and today, today possibly uh, I would prefer a Google pay to internet banking to do my uh, fund transfers, lending, microfinance. That was the next step where FinTech companies came in and started doing loan in minutes. And in fact, some companies like Bajaj also transformed themselves into a lend tech kind of solution. You know, insurance, uh, we have seen companies like Policy Bazaar uh, and Digit and how their market shares are going up and people are saving money. Similarly, we have, uh, you know, stock broking. It's, it's a big example, especially in COVID, how it really uh, deepened the market. And then we have uh, retail wealth management companies. And now we believe that wealth tech in HNI is where the future lies. And if you look at the lower part of the slide, it talks you about talks about the full industry that that's tech fin that will get created because of client facing fintech companies and in the back end you'll have so many other industries so it's a heavy slide but i just thought i'll i'll, I'll show that to people but you can remove this uh, then i that you know uh, people also talk of first generation fintech companies and new generation fintech companies so for me the oldest technology uh, a company would actually be a ICSA bank and I direct and today we have a zero da. So both are, are different. So, but there are companies which have transformed themselves into adding value and getting technology in. So for me, very clearly FinTech is the future. So if 
companies have to survive but but at the same time the the uh, the potential is so huge so huge we have just touched the tip of the iceberg and it will be many many times in the next 5 years 10 years 15 years so everybody has a role to play but the larger ones the more successful ones the ones that serve more number of clients across more number of locations would be the fintech companies because that is where uh, uh, as i said it is always about the customer and the client sees the value those four c's are solved they will tend to go more towards technology savvy companies which will add more value very interesting very interesting you know uh, talking about science fiction i'm sure you've heard of this one also that uh, science fiction is science fiction till the time science makes it fact yeah so i think uh, most of what you're talking about uh, sitting in your branch in hsbc 20 years ago would have looked like science fiction yes but today it almost seems relevant at the rate at which we are changing it just looks like it's a matter of time more than anything else Yes. Yes. Talking about time, I think uh, it, it's almost forty-five minutes since we've been discussing, and I think it's time now we just go to some audience questions. Now, I just like to tell the audience that we've got a lot of questions from you, and I think by and large, most of these have been covered. You're talking about old fintech versus new fintech. You're talking about penetration across uh, beyond top tier uh, cities, etc., etc. But there are some questions which uh, I will still take up. I think on the on the uh, question answer panel, there are a couple of them. Uh, of course one very interesting one which i thought uh, i was expecting this to come and it did come you talked about uh, the model for fisdom's uh, business what is the <laughs> revenue model for fisdom private wealth if the rms are not having a revenue target if it is not too confidential if you don't mind sharing this is from indranil sarkar so uh, actually you know uh, sachin told me that he learned something from me but i'll tell you i learned something from sachin sachin will remember he had come to my office and we were discussing i i will not take the name of the company discussing lala ka hisab and that has stayed with me that is my learning from sachin shah the fund manager he said lala ka hisab kya hota hai 100 rupees revenue 30 rupees is the fixed cost 30 rupees is the other variable cost or whatever and 33 33 and 33 is my profit mere ko itna profit milna chahiye business se that is my way of running business sachin yeah, remember so 30, this yeah, yeah so 33 rupees employee cost employee cost 30, in a, in a service business like ours 33 uh-huh. rupees other overheads 33 pbt yeah so i i am telling very clearly our promoters subramanya sv and anand dalmia or are not run, running this company just to make it a valuable company we want to make it a profitable company but but we are a very patient organization and we want uh, we want to see not just revenues but profits also over a period of time so as i told you you know we want so so in the last 5 months you know vikas and sachin and daniel you know uh, uh, god has been client kind and clients have been kind we have acquired more than 825 clients in wow. less than 6 months and we have now touching assets under management advisory of around 1000 crores and that is where it is just started and we are a, a small organization with a huge dream and we are we are looking at Uh, having assets under advisory of a lakh crores in the next three, four, five years. Now, when that happens, client give you that trust. One is, as I told you, clients will pay us advisory fees, and I'm very confident about that because that is what has happened across the industry, and that is from where one place from where revenue will come in. But the point is that, as I said, it is just going to be a huge number of client base that is going to uh, adopt fintech as a way of doing wealth management. and that is where we believe that we will get our uh, revenues and a profitability also and uh, possibly with uh, with uh, blessings from people like you and pms bazaar maybe we will have fisdom pms maybe we will have fisdom mutual fund maybe we will have fisdom insurance time will tell just stepping back from this question and it's a, it's it's actually a more holistic question than what i just asked uh, abiram ka a asked this question uh, he says that many new age players and i'm just quoting what is written many new age players are currently playing the loss leader strategy and not making money themselves he believes this is not sustainable how do you think they could start making money is lending stroke insurance broking the only practical way for them to make reasonable margins i thought it was a very interesting question for uh, for me to ask your views so i i i think it's it's a very important question thank you for this question and i'm just going to take a slightly one minute extra you know i remember once i had gone to coimbatore as a part of cnbc uh, 
IFA education program along with UTI mutual fund and we had addressed this around 80 IFAs and at that point of time these loads have been taken away and there was only trail commission and they were all saying now what tomorrow tomorrow am I going to be only forced to sell insurance I'm not saying insurance is a bad thing but they have survived because markets have gone up and you know uh, clients have given them more money and they have got used to a trail model so similarly uh, it's 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 uh, that's the right right answer. Some people will sell insurance. Some people will do lending. By the way, the largest international banks in India who do wealth management get more revenues from lending than wealth management. So that is one. The other thing is possibly manufacturing products where you, because uh, you know, one is to have an open architecture where every product is welcome. But then once you have the client, the client trusts your brand. Then the client would also possibly invest money in your own manufactured products. So there are various ways that I can see today, but maybe a few days down the line, more ways will come. But unless it's a win-win, you know, absolutely right. Nobody is going to keep on making losses and keep on uh, adding value to customers. Then they'll have to start cutting corners. But we have a plan and we have a very clear plan in terms of how we are going to be profitable over a long period of time. But customer first. And then shareholders. Uh, I'm just going to run through them. But I have one specific question which I found interesting. I'm going to pause there. Uh, gentleman called PP. I hope it's a gentleman or a lady called PP. Asked, how do you see changes happening with the accredited investors coming in the market and availing services from PMS providers? I think it's early days. This is. I, I'll just take the liberty of yeah, answering some You can answer that question better. It's, a, it's early days, but we are very excited about the potential. Uh, Pradeep Kumar has asked about how do you cover tier 2 and tier 3 which you answered. Rajesh Bhojani has asked about do you think companies selling mutual fund direct plans in a big way are making money or will make money. Uh, maybe I think uh, this is something which uh, people with uh, from the mutual fund industry will be able to talk about but I think uh, they are making money from a mutual fund point of view. Uh, from, from, from an advisor's point of view. How will you make money when you're selling mutual fund direct plans is what he's asking about. Rajesh Bhujan, you want to answer this question very quickly? So we don't make any money. SEBI is very clear that you either do advisory or distribution. If you do advisory, you get zero commission. So we are very clear. So even if I, by the way, even if I sell a secondary market bond or unlisted stock, uh, I will not charge commissions. I can't make money from those customers. So the only money that I can make is from the customers. Yeah, that's absolutely clear. So there's no, there's no money making possible in direct plans in that particular transaction with that client. Interesting, because wherever this question comes in, I'm reminded of the fact that I was part of the mutual fund advisory committee when this direct plan regulation came in. So this always is a question which will come in. Uh, Sandeep, you are Sandeep, the one, huh? You are the one. I, uh, please, please, please. <laughs> I will take credit if you want to give it to me. <laughs> no, but I think it has revolutionized the way people think and people do. And there was some initial consternation which happened, but I think it's it's really, really uh, changed the landscape of the market. Yeah. Uh, Sudhi Bukhanwala uh, asked, due to fintech and increased digitalization, the role of an advisor will be abolished in the future. I don't think so. I think you've already answered this question in terms of trust, transparency, and the digital dispensation. Uh, Sachin, one other question, which might be just for you, which yeah, is I one read of the that. perceptions of the investors is that the fund manager's charges are not linked to the gains of the investors. If the fund manager links his fee charges to the gains of the investor, probably the trust level will go up. I think this is already happening in the PMS yeah, and the AIF so, industry. Yeah, yeah. so I think uh, the question is for probably more relevant to the mutual fund where mutual it's probably fund, yeah, more yeah, fixed yeah. fees only. But uh, the, yeah. that is where the differentiation from the PMS and AIF is coming. At least at MK Investment Managers, we definitely have... Uh, you know, uh, fee structures which can be only which can be completely linked to performance, both on the PMS and AIF side, or it could be a combination of a smaller fixed fee and a and a reasonable performance fee, uh, or only performance fee with some hurdle rates. In fact, uh, the Alpha Mavens uh, strategy, which is which is where this whole theme is, we have come up with a product uh, fee structure where we are saying that we will only charge a fee only performance fees but not only performance fees but we'll charge it only end of 36 months so we don't even charge yearly fees so the idea is that uh, because we've had some experiences in the past with so many investors in my last two decades of experience where investors would say that the markets have already gone up one year you made your fees the next year it's already gone down so i lost money or i didn't make so much money but you made your fees in the first year so we are saying we take a full three-year cycle at the end of 36 months whatever is the cumulative 
uh, gains, we only charge fees on that. So I think we have already evolved to that platform where we say, uh, you know, which is our MK's tagline, uh, your success is our success. Thanks for bringing that up. And so Mr. A.V. Narayana, yes, in case a... you want to invest that, please let us know. This was a question from him. There's a question I want to answer. I think it's a very interesting question. If you don't mind, please, yeah, please, please answer. Because I think it's it's important. Uh, there is somebody who has uh, mentioned about targets and incentives. Okay. One is saying how many employees we have. We have 57 employees at this point of time, but we will soon be 100. But somebody is saying without revenues, incentives, what is the motivation for the RM? I saw that so question. I can tell yes. you something. Uh, so I am an MBA finance and marketing and I have done sales throughout my life. And sales is linked to targets and satisfaction is linked to target achievements and motivation. You know, I will tell you something I read in a book by Mr. Shiv Khera 25 years back. Motivation, the word. Motivation stands, you cut the word, it stands for motive plus action. Motive for action. If I have a motive, I'll have action and obviously I will be motivated to achieve that goal. So uh, we don't have revenue targets. That does not mean we don't have targets. We have assets under management targets. And that does not mean you don't have incentives. We have attractive incentive plans because uh, uh, sales is about uh, fixed pays and variable pay and also possible uh, 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 the, the, the proverbial golden pot at the end of the rainbow, which is ESOPs. So wealth creation is possible and absolutely uh, not. We have full fully charged high energy wealth managers who have uh, targets and who have beyond target their aspirations and, and dreams of creating a very large organization which we but we keep on serving clients but i'll tell you one thing you know for wealth managers just one thing i think is important our target should not be to achieve uh, our goals or achieve our uh, whatever our targets itself you know i, I think we should take a slightly slight helicopter view and position ourselves as helping our clients achieve their dreams and goals helping our clients achieve their dreams and goals so you know if you've gone to a gym it's your trainer if you if you have an elder sibling it's your bade bhaiya it's your brother it's your friend philosopher guide in this battle of life we have to walk along with the customer on the path and help him or her achieve his various financial goals which are linked to his life's dreams then motivation will happen uh, you know, Daniel and Pallav have told me very clearly, knowing the uh, propensity of this discussion to go beyond one hour, that we have to stick to one hour. And in the interest of the 200 odd people which are there, I'm just going to run through some questions. Uh, I have five minutes, I will take two or three minutes. Uh, any question you can pick up and uh, answer, Abhijit. Uh, I can pick up one question, I think is important. Just something we have not discussed at all. There's some question of Adil Murtuza about AI. I was just I think, coming to that. Yes, please. So that is also the future. <coughs> Can I just uh, read out the question for the yes, sake please. of the audience? Yeah, it says, what is your take on artificial intelligence slowly overshadowing the decision-making capabilities of humans? If this comes into financial decision-making in a big way, then where does our model stand, which is a combination of wealth management and technology? Uh, where does the model stand, which is a combination of wealth management and technology? And from a long-term perspective question, I think it's, it's got several layers to it. But very quickly, if you could just answer this. So I'll just answer it quickly uh, uh, and give you two or three small examples. Citibank. If you are a Citibank credit card customer, you will normally in the past have got your billing uh, structure into this much money you spend on shopping for clothes, this much money you spend into shopping for electronics, and this much money you spend into shopping for shoes. Now that was customer behavior. Facebook used that classically to understand where the client's so we became products for Facebook and they said, this is targeted marketing. So similarly, depending on investment patterns using artificial intelligence, one can actually predict. And it sounds again like a science movie, predict where somebody is going to invest next. And I think that is going to be one big uh, future uh, uh, actionable in fintech companies, not just, you know, maybe it's also about structuring products. You know, we have had in the past tech-led products which looked at covariance across stocks and that kind of stuff. So that is one part where uh, AI can AI can be used, but AI can be used on predictive uh, customer uh, behavior, investment behavior. Uh, Abhijit, if it's okay with you, I think there are two questions which I liked. Okay. Uh, one was from Abhiram, which talked about uh, many players 
currently playing the lost leader strategy and the other one was uh, i think just anshad one one adil so uh, with your permission if i can suggest uh, i think uh, abhiram could probably get the best uh, question thing and i know it is an out of syllabus thing but i think adil's question also deserves something so i'm going to take the liberty of uh, sending across this book which you just talked about bit scaling okay okay to adil i have one more suggestion this is another book no that you sent to me <laughs> how come you didn't tell me about that no uh, this is Honestly, the latest speaking. book i have read after bit scaling is very yeah, nice yeah. then why don't we do one thing let's do one thing i think it will uh, make a lot of sense because you're the guest why don't we just get a signed copy from you on the book which you love i think it will make a great uh, somebody i'll give a signed copy of my own book i don't want to sign somebody else's book what <laughs> <laughs> yeah i signed note is what i meant uh, okay. i think this is a wonderful question uh, i think that brings us to the uh, end of the session there are still questions pouring in 200 people odd have stayed through the entire session so i think it's been a very invigorating experience uh, thank you so much for for uh, for all your insights time just flew past Yeah. Uh, and uh, Sachin, thank you for your questions. Dalin and Pallav, brilliant uh, organization. I think the platform has been amazing. Uh, any last few words, uh, gentlemen? No, no, thank you so much. I am very grateful to you, and uh, I think it's lovely talking to you and talking to all the audience who had such interesting questions. Some day soon, we'll have face-to-face interactions in a larger session. Wonderful. Look thank you, Abhijit, and once again, lot of learning from you. Thank you so much. Have a nice thank evening, you. everyone. Thank, thank you. you. So much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. So, participant, once again, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, looking for hosting another insightful session. Uh, wishing you happy and uh, safe weekend. Uh, thank you, everyone. <laughs>